is a, is that proper English, is a um, family of servant missionaries. Can you say that with me? We are a family of servant missionaries, amen? And today I'm going to talk about the gospel. We're going to do a new series, um, what, the, what is the gospel over the next four weeks uh, or so. And we want to uh, go through that, um, hopefully um, encouraging you to really understand what we're sharing and why we're sharing it, amen? And so um, we want to know, we know that in Ephesians 1 tells us that Christ is the head of the church. Can you say amen? Uh, Christ is the head of the church. He's the head of this church. He's the head of all his churches. Amen. So we know that, in, uh, that he is Lord over all of what we do. Um, so the church, what is the church? So starting off with a little bit of introduction here, so maybe some repeating from the last few weeks, but the church is a gathering of people, right? We know that the church is a called out one. So we are called to gather together and worship together and love each other and work together. Amen. So we are a gathering of the called out ones. We are the church. Amen. We should um, we should define ourselves as who we are, not what we do. So if I say Angel, um, I, I introduce myself to Angel. I say hi, Angel. My name's Bob, and you would say, and and what do you do? Or who? I don't know. Let me do, let me ask you a different question. Who are you? I don't know, most of us can't answer that question. Melissa. Melissa. Marissa. Marissa. Hi, my name's Bob. Hi. What, what do you what do you do? I'm a student at UW. Okay, so she's gonna identify herself as a student at UW. And but who are you? I'm a child of God. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm a child of God. What else? You're a child of God and what? We always try to identify ourselves. In a world, we always identify with what we do. I'm a doctor, right? We like that. If, there, if you have your PhD, I'm a grad student. I love grad students. I'm a grad student. I'm in my PhD program. I'm studying blah, 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 blah. You, always, you have that as a status, right? As a believer, uh, we have a different identity, don't we? Say yes. We have a different identity. So our, we are not by what we do, but it's who we are or being. So our... Um, let me, uh, let me turn this on right here. Wait a second. I'm trying. There we go. <laughs> Tap to create a new presentation. Sometimes our identity is by um, is what we, we are. We identify ourselves with what we do, and that is contrary to the gospel. Look at, in Genesis chapter three when Adam and Eve fell and sin entered the world for the very first time. The 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 the, the enemy, the devil, tricked Eve by telling her not to touch the fruit, not to um, eat of the fruit, not to uh, be the not to um, um, to partake of what God and then he actually lied to her and, and told her that God said something else, right? So she actually tried to do something to be something. And when she already was a child of God, wasn't she? Wasn't Adam Eve already in the presence of God? Wasn't Adam Eve already in a sinless state? Wasn't Adam Eve we're, what we're working for right now? We're, we're, we're trying to be like them, if you will, in a sense, we want to walk with God, we want to talk with God in a cool evening, we have this awesome relationship, and here comes somebody bringing doubt in, and they, she believed a lie, and her husband believed a lie also, and then sent it into the world. What I love about that is John 3, uh, in Genesis 3, uh, 15 and 16, it talks about how Jesus is going to crush Satan's head, and so that's really cool. So we see the prophecy of the victory that we can have in Jesus, but 
the sin of works and our identity with what we do has infiltrated the church world so much that it's about doing something instead of being something. Out of our being, then we have what we're doing instead of our doing of being what we be. So our identity is not what we do. Does that make sense to anybody? It made sense in my head, so hopefully it made sense to you. So we're trying to understand where sin and where this work mentality has entered into the church where we have to do things and we go, well, look at all the stuff we did. I got the nursery schedule ready. I got called everybody. I made sure that the, the drain was working properly this morning. I was, I, all these things that we do is not as important as about who we are. Why is that such a more, most important thing? Because if James says we have faith, and faith is by our work, we show our faith by our works, but the first thing that has to happen is our faith. Amen? I won't get too ahead of, ahead of myself. So, who is God? Is this um, just a slide this way? Or do I tap on Oh, here we go. I had worked on this this morning. Like, on my computer, it works really, really well. But here is working on this. So we want to look at uh, four things today. And this is something most of us have seen already. It's going to review a little bit. Who is God? It is important to understand who it is. God is who? Our Father, right? Yes. Okay. What has he done? We say, what has God done for us? God has sent His Son to die for us so our sins can be forgiven. Right? So we have to identify with what we're doing, our sin. And who are we now? As somebody said it earlier. We are God's children. We are His beloved. We are so much more than that. And uh, what we do is, I wish I had a talk for people, right? The line there. But anyway, so just, I want to have an, so we're look at, what, who is God is our theology, right? God is, we talk about the, theology just for us, you know, ministry-minded people. We, what God has done is our Christology. What has happened in the church is we have talked about God so much and identified God, people towards God, but we forget about Jesus. All right? As long as you believe in God, then you're okay, right? But it's not really just believing in God. We have to believe that Jesus gave us a way to God. So we call it Christology. Who are we? Um, eschatology and it's our identity what we are, who we are and then it's what we do is what we call it a missionology is our mission that God's called for us and I'll explain that a little bit more a little bit later so we look at who is God, God is our father who, what has he done, he sent the son for us, who are we, we are his children and then later on we should understand that there's things that we have to do as a mission for God to call us to do. Amen? So what's happened in the church, we have taken what we do and put it in front of who we are. So we have to do certain things. Well, Pastor, you've been preaching that for 10 years. You have to do something. You have to share your faith. You have to love your neighbor. You have to do these things. I know I've been doing that. And I say to myself, yes, I've been teaching you the wrong motivation towards your walk with God. I've been saying you have to do these things. And it's almost, I didn't say it, but it's almost like you have to prove that you're a Christian by what you do. How does that ever feel that way? Or is this me? Right? I have to do, I have to do, I have to do. And I'm doing something, I'm not on the right motivation. Uh, it's, it's because I feel I'm obligated to, if I don't, I'm not a good Christian. Anybody feel that way? Right? You feel that way. But if it's by what, who we are, if we change it around, we look at there's a relationship with Father God that we get through Jesus Christ, and then it, it tells us who we actually are. And then from the love of the Father, John 17 tells us when Jesus prayed for us, he prayed, Father, I know you love me. Love them, us, like you love me. Oh my goodness. Jesus praying that we would understand the love of the Father. That we'd have the same love that God the Father has for Jesus. Amen? He loves you and He loves me. He wants you to have that love. And Jesus prayed, Father, give them that same love that you have for me. Do you feel love this morning after saying that? Huh? Father God loves you and Jesus is praying for you to receive that love. It's just amazing. Amen? So our doing comes out of, of who I am and not out of our doing identified us. Okay? So in Romans 1, 1 turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 1.
I'm going to look at verse um, 16 and 17, 18, 19, 20. It says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first the Jews, then the, the Gentiles. For in the gospel, uh, a righteousness comes from God, is revealed a righteousness that is by faith. From first to last, just as it is written, the righteous shall live by what? Faith. Then verse 18 says, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godliness and wickedness for man, of man who surpasses the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known of God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature has been clearly seen, being understood from what he has been made so that men are without an excuse. You say amen. Men will be without excuse. Because it says, let's just go, I'm going to stick with the notes here. It says, we are the people that live by faith. What is faith? We are people that live by faith. I believe what God's word said is true. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe what the Father's plan was from the beginning of time till now is true. I believe that I can be forgiven for my sins. I believe that if I'm sick, I can pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, and I can be healed of my sickness. Let me say that again. I believe in the Father. I believe when I pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I can be healed. Amen? So I know that because I am his child, and he loves me, and he cares about me. Amen? We are people of faith. First Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians 5, 20 says, He who knew no sin became sin for us. Jesus became sin for us. That you know uh, that the love you that you'll know the love of the Father. Amen? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Who God is is the Father. Who what he's done is he sent Jesus. And who we are, we are his children. Amen? And said so we are his family. Yeah, I'm going to go right through this real quick. Oh, too many. Let's say, say it this way. God is our creator. Amen? He's the creator of heaven and earth. Right? Jesus Christ creates things. He created it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and we are His, what? Created. Look at that. So God is the creator. He, Jesus creates. And we are created in what? His image. We are His image bearers. So think about that. We don't even have, we're not only created, but we are created in His image to be His image bearers. And so we, so we what we do at the end is we co-create, right? We two of us do that. And we do that to glorify God. And we show God's glory to the world. So we glorify God. And so we create, we are created to be, uh, show God's glory to the world around us. That's what we do later on. After we understand that we are carrying the image of God. How many of you ever think about that? You're carrying the very image of God. It's in you. It's who you are. So when we go out in the world, we are... Like God in the world. Well, after all, that's heresy. We're not God. No, we're the image of God. Amen? We carry God's love. What are we carrying? God poured his love in us. When we were yet sinners, we knew nothing. We were actually children of wrath. Look at verse 18. It says, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven. God is sending his wrath out to the world. We are children of wrath. We are children, we're actually enemies of God. But then we understood the love of God, we came to Him, and then we became His children. Isn't that awesome? So I used to say this, I used to say this, I used to be really nice. This is the church, this is probably, I probably taught this wrong for years. So we say there, the people outside the church are pre-Christians, right? Come on. I remember you say that. They're uh, future believers, right? 
But really, they're just like we were. We were, we, we were the enemy of God, and we carried the wrath of God on us before we became a believer. Everybody that doesn't believe is an enemy of God. Whoa, wait a second. What does that mean? Because they hate, like this young man, he, I, don't, I, have, I have no knowledge, I will not even recognize that there is a God. Why? Because his grandparents, now his grandparents were um, uh, Buddhists, his parents were kind of Buddhists, and now he's not even a believer in Buddha, right? That happened in America too. We, our grandparents were great Christians, prayed, go to prayer meetings, go to church every time the door was open. Then you have my generation that kind of like sort of, and now we have a new generation that's like, man, you guys, you guys all messed up. We need to get back to loving on God, right? So we have this change, and even in Christianity, we see that I don't want to believe in God anymore because our generation has changed, and so we need to come back with the power and the love of God and show the glory of God to the world. So, um, so Father, you send the Son. We are children of wrath. Say, oh me or oh my. We're dead to our in sin. We're saved. Uh, we're slaves to sin because of Satan. Right? How many of you know what sin issues in your life? We're dead. Uh, Christ died for our sins or for sinners. And that's the end, right? Yeah. Oh. And so we are his family because of what they did for us. Oh, this is really good. I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me let me go back. <laughs> so we are family. We're loved. We are not lacking in any love. We believe uh, we are loved, so we should love. That's what happens with Christians when we don't do the work of the ministry, or the, or the or we lack in faith, we lack in unbelief, and because we don't understand the love of the Father, we don't understand the love Jesus gave to us. We lack our lack of love for the world becomes out of our lack of understanding who Christ is. That was good. Let me say that again, okay? Our lack of love for the world and for each other comes out of our lack of understanding what Jesus did for us. So what is the world looking for? What is this young, young uh, Chinese man looking for? He's looking for genuine love that he can get from his grandparents or get from his mom or his family or from any church, Buddha, uh, Buddhist temple. He didn't get that. And he's, he has such a lack of love that now I don't even want to believe there's a God at all. Who told him there wasn't a God? It just came out of his mouth like, I don't believe there's a God. Instantly. Like, I didn't have to pull it out of him or anything. Like, where he was at, he just told me. I'm like, oh, that's a Holy Ghost moment for me. I'm like, I'm going to share with him God. So we had a long drive. And I'm going to get to know his story before I tell him about Jesus, right? I want to know his story. I want to know where he's from. I, know what, I want to know why he doesn't believe. I'm going to love him. I'm going to be there for him till the end, till I get that little box, however big it was, into his dorm room. I'm just going to be there for him. That's why I made that you know, commitment at that moment. And I, 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 I became, I didn't become an Uber driver. I became a believer that wants to help this unbeliever come to know the love of God. Amen? And so anyway, we have, uh, we are loved. We have to understand that. I, I think that's one thing that the church uh, misses. We, we try to work towards getting this love. And we are loved already. Your love. Amen? We try so hard to do that. I think um, apart from Jesus Christ, we can do nothing. By faith you are saved, and it's not by works. Righteousness should live by the righteous should live by faith. All right. So look at Abraham, the father of our uh, of Christianity, if you will. All right. Father Abraham leaves the land of Chaldees. God told him to go to another land, and what did he, one of the first things he did is he tried to sell his wife to because he didn't want to get in trouble. I mean, here's the father of the faith. I mean, we don't have to be perfect, but he was already chosen. Amen? And he lived by faith, even though he did some things that didn't seem like quite right. We'll talk about a couple other uh, patriarchs in the, in the, in the, in, um, in the faith. Uh, they, they made mistakes, but they still had faith to believe what God said is true. Amen? You ever go through a situation in your life that, man, things aren't working out, but you know God said? Amen? 
God said that you are righteous, or God said you will be an overcomer, you, and you just hung on to that. I remember us going through some, some difficulties a few years ago, and we said, God called us to be here, we're going to we're gonna stick it out, no matter what, and God will move us from our, our situation. And he did. It took seven years, but we went through it, amen? But God can do things for you if you just hang on to his belief. Now, think about um, all our, our, our Christian friends across the world that are being persecuted right now. I'm thinking, what if they came to my house and threatened to cut my head off or whatever, right? Would I deny God? No, I wouldn't. I, 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 I was sitting there and, and reading my Bible, and I was thinking, like, if that happened, then I'm going to die for Christ. That's just the way it's going to be. I will not, no matter what happens to me in America, no matter what happens in the future in America, if things go haywire and down or whatever is happening in the world and the political scene, it really doesn't matter because I love Jesus. Amen? I love God. And I want that same love to flow out of me so that others may love God too. Amen? And that's what I really think is important. Look at David, King David. I mean, here's a man after God's own heart. He goes and has an adulterous affair. He, he kills the husband of the lady he had adult, but had a child, right? And then, because he had a heart after God, because he had faith to believe what God told him that he was, he was he repented, and God saved him. He didn't destroy him. God delivered him from all that. Amen? God, so what, it doesn't matter how messed up and, and things we're going through. We're just going to go through them, but never waver in our faith of who God is. Because then we're just we're turning the children to wrath. We're not going to do that. We're going to be at like the end of the time where it says there's sheep and there's goats. You, ever, you know the story when at the end Jesus said, there, I never knew. But Jesus, I gave water. I, I did this and I did this. But you didn't know me. You didn't know me. I did all these works because you identified yourself with your works at the end, the last quarter, if you will. And not you didn't know who God was. You don't know who I was. You did a lot of works in the name of Christianity, but you really didn't show my love. You didn't know me. So it's not by works we're saved, we are saved by our faith in God the Father, in Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, so we can do the things of God. So what's more important? Is the works more important? I'm jumping to the end of my sermon. Is the works more important? Or is knowing Father God? Is, is the things that I do is important? Is knowing the love of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice He did for us? Is the works more important, or is it walking in the power of the Holy Spirit? The works will come out of that. It will flow out of that. But let's know Him. Because when you know Him, and you're sitting next to a Chinese student that's a sophomore, going through uh, math or physics, I forget what classes he's going to be doing, then you can be, the power of God will come on you, and you'll be able to share something with Him and open up His heart to God. Amen? Or the power, the power, oh, folks, I'm, jump, I'm jumping ahead, but let me slow down a little bit. The power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Is that on there? We love others. Okay, and then the next one. We have the Son. The Father gave the Son. The Son came to serve. We're servants of God. I think my wife heard to me right now. Uh, witness to, uh, to Jesus and His Word and in deed. We have God gave us the Father, gave us the Son, and He gave us the Spirit. He empowered the Son. He, because we are missionaries, so we, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. We are, he empowered the Son and, and to be missionaries. So let's look at um, in Luke. Well, let me go back just a little bit. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In verse 1, it says this, and we're going to go through verse 8. It says, Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you when you received and on which you have taken your stand. Verse 2, By this gospel you were saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I pass on to you on the first, uh, as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture. So Christ did what he said he was going to do because he was obedient to the Father. Can you say amen? That he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to Scripture, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. And after that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living 
though some have fallen asleep, meaning they have passed away. Then, uh, then he appeared to James, and he appeared also to me as one being abnormally uh, born. For I am the least of the apostles. And Paul goes about to explain himself. But we believe that he died. This is the gospel right here. What are we telling people about the gospel? We are sharing that Jesus Christ obeyed the Father to die uh, on a cross for your sins and my sins. That is the truth. That is the gospel. That is what we share. But not only that he died and he was buried, but because of what Scripture said, he rose again. And three days later, he rose from the dead and now is sitting at the, Father, at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Look what Jesus did. Uh, but, uh, let's turn to another scripture, uh, Romans chapter 8. And this will show us the power of the Spirit. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? If you are in Christ Jesus, we don't have to carry the guilt of our sin any longer. Amen? We're not condemned. You are alive in Christ. You are His child now. You are, you, are, you are His. You don't have to be all the sin, all the stuff that you did in the past. When you said Jesus, when you, when you believed, this is where the church, let me warn, uh, help you. When I grew up through church, it was always about, when people got saved, it was always about saying a certain prayer. Even in one of my Bibles, I wrote, I, got, I accepted Christ January 5th, 19th, a uh, long time ago. And, and, uh, <laughs> And when I, you know, I, I, what people have done is they go back to that Bible, they open up and go, yeah, I accepted Christ, I got saved that day. And they're never walking with God, you know, ever since. They have these problems, you know, they have to go back to that particular day. We are saved when we surrender our life to God. We are saved when we believe what God's Word says about Jesus, Right? We got saved where our spirit became alive when, when we said, yes, I have faith. To, we didn't say it this way, but we had faith to believe what we were reading is true. We had faith to believe with the, with the, when, the, when we heard about Jesus that forgives sins. We believed. We had faith to believe when we understood that his blood shed was shed that we could have forgiveness. So then that moment. We were saved. Or in John 3 says we were born again. We must be born again. We have a moment when we say, yes, we are saved. Then we are being saved, correct? We are being saved every day. We are walking this thing out with God. We are, we are being saved. We are born again on that moment when we had faith to believe that Jesus Christ helped us. We have faith to believe when the Holy Spirit came upon us and he Open up our eyes and our understanding and revelation came to us that God loved us. I remember he loved me. That's what overwhelmed me when I gave my life to Jesus, is that he loved me. And I thought I was unlovable. And that love just over, it, it filled me. It, it was like I was in a bubble. It was me and God. I never experienced anything like that in my life. That moment, I believed for the very first time. January 25th, 1980 long time ago. Since then, I am continually being saved, and my faith has been challenged. The enemy has come and tried to steal away from me. There are circumstances that made me doubt and fear, and I begin to just pray, God, help me. And I learned recently that I can pray this way, Lord, help my unbelief. Help me when I doubt you. Help me when I don't understand. Help me, Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit was given. Jesus died for our sins, but the Spirit of God was given to us by Jesus so we'd be empowered to understand his word and to walk this life out with him. Amen? We can't do it. Jesus couldn't do it by himself. Think about it. Luke chapter 4. I mean, Luke chapter 3. Jesus was baptized. Remember the story? Jesus went down to the Jordan. John was baptized and John the Baptist was baptizing people. Jesus came down there and John didn't want to be baptized by Jesus. I mean, to baptize Jesus. But Jesus said, you have to be to fulfill all righteousness. We have to do this to fulfill righteousness. So he went in the water. John baptized him. He came out of the water. What happened immediately? The heavens opened up, didn't it? And what happened? We heard God's voice. They heard God's voice. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Did Jesus do anything yet? He's had to make water and wine, right? But he really didn't start his ministry yet. Right? 
He didn't do anything, God. He was the Son of God. And God the Father said, I love you. And then what happened next is we see that the, the Spirit of God descended on him. He says, like a dove. He was the power of God. The power of the Spirit was on him. Jesus began his earth. We need the same thing. We need to believe. We need to be baptized. We need to be submerged in God. Amen? And then the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon us so we can do the work that God's called us to do. That's first. It's our identity with God first. And then it's what we do. Right? It's who we are in God. Then we do stuff. But we try to do stuff and say, look how, look what I'm doing for God. I did all, I saved 84 students on campus. Yay. You didn't do anything. We didn't do it. We can't do anything. We can't do ministry. We can't do, we can't be a Christian. We can't do what we're called to do without the power of God. We just can't do it. You can try to do it. You can, you can maybe even have a little bit of success with that, but you will never sustain that without the Holy Spirit. That's why I know coming to Madison, Wisconsin was God's idea, not ours. Because we can't do this. It's beyond our capability. And then we, it's, it's, when we see success, we give God thanks because it's Him that changed the life. It was Him that delivered somebody. It was Him that healed somebody. Amen? It was God that did it. And Jesus did the same thing. Also, when Jesus was tempted, think about that. When Jesus went into the desert and was tempted by the enemy, right? How did He overcome that temptation? Everybody says initially what? You said it. Go ahead. We spoke the word. And we've been teach, I've been teaching that for years. But it's not really 100% true. He overcame it by the power, the empowering of the Holy Spirit in him. Bam, the word, right? The power, the power of the Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit in you. And the Holy Spirit will call to you scripture. The Holy Spirit will call to you that you have the power to lay hands on the sick and they'll heal. The Holy Spirit will remind you of something that that person is going through so you can share with them. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power of the Holy Spirit came on Jesus just like he needs us. He's a type for us that we need that power to walk this walk. We can't do it on our own. Amen. Luke, say that. Luke, Luke 4 1. Luke 4 Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. Luke wrote it there. So, yes, Luke 4 1. Thank you. Also, um, he's, we gave his power. Remember, I, just, I said when I opened up sermon, the sermon in, in John 17, God loved us, right? Jesus prayed for us that we would have his love, that we'd also have the ministry. That God, uh, just go back and read, not, I won't read today, but Luke, uh, John 17. Read John 17. John uh, recorded the prayer that Jesus prayed for us before he went to, the, to be crucified. He prayed that we have the power and the revelation of the Holy Spirit in us. So we can do the work that we're, he's called, uh, that the disciples and us were called to do. And actually in, in Acts 1.8, let's turn to Acts 1.8 real quick. It says this. It says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jer Jer Jerusalem and in all of Judah and Samaria and the ends of the earth. And I, I, tell, I tell people in the church, in our church family, you are empowered by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses to your family, to your, your neighbors, and to the city of Madison. Right? You are uh, empowered to be witnesses to the people you work with. You are empowered to do what God's called you to do. Amen? And that could be here or all the way around the world, wherever God calls you to go. Amen? So I, uh, I, mean, uh, I think some of the people that we ministered over the years are empowered to do ministry in their countries. I think that's awesome. They came through our church for a short time. We were able to love on them. We were able to be family with them. And then they leave. And then they're empowered. We, we send them out. We, we believe that God has given them the ability to, to share. John... Uh, um, John 3 says, let's turn to John chapter 3 real quick. Well, not quick, just, just turn here. So this is a story about Nicodemus. He says that we, uh, verse 5, Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Verse 5, uh, well, the Nicodemus came to Jesus that night. Of course, some of us know that's part of the story. I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. What does that mean, you're born again? So your children of wrath, we're unbelievers, we're enemies of God, something has to happen. So our spirits, look at verse, um, verse 5, it says, I tell you the tr 
true. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water, which is a nat natural birth, and born of the spirit. So what happens? We are, we are made of a body, soul, and spirit. Our spirit becomes alive to the Holy Spirit. We're empowered now to understand the things of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he suffered and died that my sins would be forgiven. I'm cleansed by his blood. I believe on the third day he went into the grave, he rose again, and then he was seen about a bunch of people in the, in, around Jerusalem after his resurrection, and then he ascended into heaven. I believe that all happened. And because of that, faith began to change in me. I believe the word of God. I, I, my spirit became alive to the Holy Spirit, and now the things of God I begin to understand. One of the greatest things that you can understand is the very love of the Father. Amen? The love of the Father. He loves you. I don't know. I, I can't be loved by anybody because I'm such a messed up person. God knows the most inner thoughts of your heart and your mind. God, I'm just messed up. How can God love me? He does anyway. That's amazing to me. I still don't understand it. I don't have, I can't comprehend how God can love everybody in the world. I can I don't have personally, I don't have that kind of love. I have to get the revelation of the Spirit of God in me. Say, no, God, I want to love people like you love. I remember praying, it was uh, many years ago, I was praying uh, in my bedroom, uh, Tina was in the living room, I was praying and seeking God because I didn't understand things of God, I just knew that if I go to Him, He would help me understand the Word, and I said, God, let me, let me see, uh, I don't know how exactly I said it, I said, let me see uh, how you see people, how do you see the world? God broke my heart when I began to see visions of how people rejected God and that how people chose death over life instead of life. And I began to weep deep in my spirit. It's like I was having a baby. I wouldn't have a baby, but it's like I was having a baby. I began to just convulse and cry out because I couldn't believe that people would reject the very love of God. I, I just remember that God just reminded me of that moment. I just, you know, he sees the world. He loves the world. He doesn't want anybody to perish. Matter of fact, hell was never meant for anybody except for the devils and those that rejected God way back in, in that time. It was not for us or not for humanity. He wanted all of us to be saved. Amen? Hallelujah. And God, by his spirit, is empowering you and me as he empowered his son so the son could do the mission so our identity is not only that we're children of God, we're also joint heirs with Jesus, right? We're joint heirs with Jesus, and then we're also empowered in, with, by the Spirit to be missionaries. So our identity is that we're a family of God through the Father. We are servants, just like Jesus served the world and gave his life for it. And then by his Spirit, we are empowered to do that work. We can't do it on our own. I mean, I like to watch, go taste of Madison instead of going out there with some, to something, right? Or watching a football game for four hours, so, you know, or whatever. But the Spirit of God is telling us to do certain things. We'll do it because we love the Father, we understand the love of the Father. Amen. Isn't that a different motivation than the pastor telling you you got to go witnessing today? Come on, most of other church people here, you know what I'm saying? You have to do a task list, and that's what I taught here for years. You, Rajiv, you have to do this, and you have to do this, and you have to do this. Has to get done all these tasks, and then we forget that I, the most important thing I can teach you is to love Father God. To love Jesus, and love the Holy Spirit, and listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. Church membership is not important. Our identity as an organization is not as important as your identity. The greatest thing, I was, I was praying this morning, what can I tell you guys that would help you understand how much God loves you? The most important thing you can do is understand that you are a child of God. And He loved you so much that He sent His Son to die for you. Get it. Get it in your spirit. Understand that His death gave us life. 
Because we were children of wrath. We were destined for, uh, for darkness. And now we're children of light. And we have hope that the world doesn't have. That's the gospel. That Jesus, who promised that he would raise again, did it. That's the gospel, amen? And then he said something that was so profound. He told us, the, the apostles, he says, now that I'm leaving, I'm coming back too. And I'm going to come back for you. And eventually there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And we are promised a new body. Amen? And it's, gonna, it's, it's a hope that we have to be with him again. But until then, he gave us the Spirit of God to empower us and do to be missionaries. But we cannot be missionaries unless we understand the love of the Father. Father God loves you this morning. We, we're, we, otherwise, we're, we're doing this out of false, a false motivation. It's just like, there's, what, are we, what are we doing this for? How many would say, like, don't raise your hand. How many say, like, yeah, I think I should do more for God. Right? We all want to do that. I want to do more. I want to tell you, to do more right now, Get in the Word of God. Know the message. Understand Romans 8. Understand 1 Corinthians 13 and 14. Understand Luke and John. Understand what the writers are telling us about who Jesus is. And spend a little time in their prayer closet somewhere. Spend some time alone with God. But pastor, my life is busy. Yeah, so was Jesus so busy. And he got away to be with the Father. So let's just be, uh, do what he did, all right? Spend some time. Take your week. I know you single dads, it's a hard thing to do, all right? I get that. I know you're, everybody has different, difficult lives, studying. And there's just stuff life has. I get that. But I'm telling you, in the end times, the only thing that's going to matter is that we share the love of the Father, that there's hope in Jesus Christ, and we can't do it on our own. We need power through the Holy Spirit to do that, and He gave that power to you and me. Can you say glory to God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gave it to you and me so we can have victory over sin, sickness, diseases. We can have victory over everything. Let's, I want to share one last thought with you, and then we're going to close. Look, turn to... Um, uh, uh, James chapter 2. James chapter 2 is right after the book of Hebrews. James chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse 14. We're talking about works and deeds and faith. And so we understand, most of us in here know that there's things that we have to do, right? But our doing comes out of who we are, our identity. We're, we were children. We were children of wrath, and now we're part of the family of God. We are servant missionaries because of His Son was served. We want to be servants to the world, and we are missionaries because the Holy Spirit has empowered us to go do something, be a witness for God. Amen. And we, we can't do that on our own. James chapter two, uh, verse fourteen says, "What good is it?" Uh, is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? So here we go. We have, I'm telling you, have faith. Don't worry about the work. But here's an example. Can such faith save him? No. Suppose a, a, daughter, a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you say to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself is uh, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have deeds. Show me your faith by your, without deeds and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe and shudder. So what happened? We're, we're, what, what, what is James saying here? I have faith to believe that God is who he said he is. I have faith to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I have faith that the Holy Spirit will guide and lead me. And because of that, then now I, I will show you this by what I do. See, it's a different, it's not a requirement to do something for the kingdom of God. It, it, and that's what we taught for many years. But I want to understand it flows out of, it doesn't become a burden anymore. It just comes, becomes every, every part of our life. 
where the Spirit of God is pulling out of us, like uh, John 7, 38 said, rivers of living water will flow out of you and me. How does that flow out of us? Because now we're connected to the Father in a way that we understand this great love that He has for us. And we understand the forgiveness that we have and we see the hurting world, the, the rejection, the, the sin that, our, that the world has. We, the, the love will just flow out of us and then we begin to do things differently. Amen? Then we have compassion that only comes from God. How do we get compassion? We just we can judge people real easy. It's so easy. Look at that. Why is that old man I remember sharing? I, I get once in a while I get tips from Uber, and so I, I collect them. About ninety eight percent of them I give away. And um, uh, I picked up a young lady, and I told her I was going to stop on the corner because this. And a gentleman was there uh, with his bags and stuff. You know, he's a homeless guy. And I don't know his story uh, at this point. But I just felt like I should give him that money that was in my, that I'd been collecting. And I don't know how much was there. You know, it could have been five, ten, twenty dollars, or that's not very much. But anyway, so I said I was going to stop and, and give him that money. She said it was okay because she was on the meter. And so I stopped just a second, gave him the money, and left. And then I got a chance to explain to her why I do that, right? So I got to share the gospel with her and not even share it, you know, just, anyway. So at the end, she, of course, she gave me a couple bucks, so that was kind of cool. Uh, I, I, I don't know, and at first, I, I, then I thought well, maybe I guilt her into it, but maybe it was the Holy Spirit, but I just thought, thought it was cool to, to share with her why we didn't do that. But our being and who we are needs to flow out of the love that we have for Father, the love that Father has for us. Amen? I know that, oh my goodness, that Jesus accomplished everything that we need. Forgiveness, healing, uh, breaking generational curses, chains that are part of our past. He, he broke all those things for us. And then, because of our faith, he says, those. they knew, the Father and the Son knew that, hey, we're going to give you something to, to help you. Stay on the right track. Illuminate the Word of God to us so we understand it. And to just be able to help people whenever. So that love will flow out of us like rivers of living water that flows. Read that. It says, by faith, rivers. By faith, though, that, that river will flow out of us. Amen? I believe I'm a conduit to the love of God for the world. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's uh, stand in closing. Father. Uh -huh. 